Ladies and gentlemen. That's goddamn right. That is goddamn right. Gracie in the building! Yeah, hell yeah! Fucking computer overloads will not control me today. We got it. Now we're jamming. Fellas, I appreciate Thanks, you Jeff. joining. Thank you for being here. Uh, I love your music and your unique style on the, on the take of vocals, and we'll get to all that. But uh, for those that may not know who you guys are, can you properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. I know we're in Wisconsin, but where in Wisconsin? And uh, just uh, plug and promote anything you'd like. Okay. Um, we, uh, my name's David, David Tarantino. I'm the vocalist, and uh, we are from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're um, like an emo, uh, metalcore, mathcore-ish, um, like chaotic hardcore kind of band, kind of similar to like... I don't know, The Bled or like The Chariot or Every Time I Die, Kanashi. Some um, good references. Like, definitely got yeah, the definitely energy super, like, energy those emo, bands have screechy. for sure. Yeah, something like that. And um, I don't know, definitely like the the vocals um, are kind of unique in their own. A lot of like um, screechy screams, maybe like the number 12 or something like that, but mixed with a lot of like crying and uh yelling um maybe almost like like more metal like la dispute or like you know um stuff like that kind of similar to kanashi but like yeah super like crying and yelling and screechy screams just like very uh abrasive and almost like jarring vocals like to 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 do the emotional impact but um that's kind of like the vibe but uh this is trevor he's our drummer hi trevor hi i'm trevor i can also talk uh yeah well you pretty much covered all of it you did a pretty good job there <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I, as, as you can see we're from wisconsin yeah i'm milwaukee our, wisconsin uh, well, that's that's where we uh what packers sing got the <laughs> brewers on in the background you just can't see it how what's the score um, what's the score right now uh they are beating the astros two to nothing in the sixth currently okay so you love to see that you love For to sure. see that i'm a i'm a big yankee um, fan so we're off to a rough start that's okay. You'll pick it up. <laughs> it's the, all AL, the AL East is ridiculous. So it, it is. It is rough. The Rays killing everybody. Uh, I, yeah, I want to well, just whipped our ass this weekend. I want to. I want to start with. Uh, I got a bunch of questions for you guys, but I, first, I appreciate you being here. I, I want to know first. We have Aaron Gillespie on the show next month, and I've never had the chance to talk to him. I talked to. I talked to Spencer, but I want to know what it was like to work with Aaron. And uh, how that impacted how that particular song came out, like once you received his his final vocals. Sure. So um, we had the idea. It, it the idea to get him on the song came after it was pretty much all finished. Um, I think we had the idea that there would possibly be a guest feature on it uh, at some point during the song, and then it was just kind of a matter of figuring out where we would put him on the song actually um and then last february we actually did a cover of their song too bright to see too loud to hear and uh i think all of us had a bit of like an under oath renaissance going through that and listening to that song again and just kind of like falling back into the wormhole of their discography did who actually and did who actually did their and everyone else like Oh my bad. Uh, who I I gotta jump in and ask a question. Who did her, who did the recording for for the EP for for Wait in the Water? So we recorded it at home. Uh, actually, like half of it in this room that we're sitting in right now. Um, we did the drums in this room, vocals in this room, uh, and then John, our guitarist, did the guitars and bass at his house in his basement. Um, so it came together in a basement, and then once it was all recorded we sent it off to Will Putney to be mixed and mastered. Um, so then going back to Aaron, we you know chose Aaron. We uh, reached out to him just through his website. He's got a contact section on his website. Um, was put in contact with his manager. He looped us into Aaron personally and uh, sent him the song. 
Uh, we wanted him to write his own lyrics to it, so his part is actually his own lyrics, his own placement. We just kind of gave him the the tempos and the the measures of like where we want you, and uh, he did it and <laughs> absolutely crushed it. Yeah, it and then sent great. it back to us. So then we sent that over to Will, and he put a little bit of didn't really need. I wouldn't. I hesitate to say studio magic because there wasn't really anything that he needed to fix, but just took it and elevated it to the next level and kind of put that the nice little polish on it that we needed to to slide into the song so so is that you trevor doing all the the bass recordings uh, initially uh yeah so we uh, i technically engineered the drums myself you know just play i have my computer next while i'm tracking uh but i, I engineered the the vocals for david and john and then uh john did his own stuff on his own he engineered and got all of his tones on his own um but yeah we, as far as the the actual making of the music and the printing of the audio files that was all done by us and then uh done to a high enough quality where we could send it <laughs> off to uh will putney and have him you know give him workable files which was like the most important thing to me it's like uh, it's you can only polish a turd to you know so much so having oh. to give him super high quality audio files was uh, a, a decent challenge on our end, but it's the best way to learn is just throwing yourself into the deep end. It's true. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta dive in with the, with the weights on and sink to the bottom and figure out how to swim, man. That's, oh, that's... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait in the water. I like that. <laughs> hey, uh, so, so David, what I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but, but your vocals are so unique. Where do you, where do you draw the initial inspiration for, for, Hey guys, I got a new one. It's band practice time. And then I imagine the motion just pouring out of you when you, when you perform a something and the song gets written, or I don't know how you guys write the song, but can you just go into how you, you drive your inspiration for how you perform? Okay. Yeah. It's mostly just like trying to be in tune with like the, lyrics and the way I want the emotions to come out like you you nailed that spot on you know I you know vocalists I always like looked up to or like I feel like I'm like drawing from or like older um or like Brian from Knock Loose especially like the like the the EP um the first one you know where he like you know before he got like just like super like high screechy all the time you know he was you know doing more of like the like yelly stuff and like uh or even like older like when when ollie sykes changed his vocals like for suicide season and like heaven hell when he'd like go in between like the death metal vocals to like <clears throat> you know the yelling and the like more emotional like singing and crying and so it's like you know taking like stuff from that or like really um i don't know adding more like i don't know like just like like sass or but it's not really like sass like scrams but um you know just like i don't know just like that like emotional like flavor that's not just like everything else just to to turn up the intensity and the really like rawness of the feel of of the the because like all the all the songs are just so like i don't know it's oh it's almost like that point of like emotional where it's, it's not just like normal like warp tour style or like hot topic emo you know it, it's not like the cliche emo it's like really more like oh my god like i get the lot I of speed vibes like, for sure it, yeah like it's it's like oh i'm like so distraught and so just dis destroyed emo it's not even like that like you know like cookie cutter anymore it's it's just like this is like my, my life is over kind of emo stuff like that. But you, you seem like, like a like really happy guy. An old guy cook. Like you seem like a really <laughs> happy, joyful fella. Uh, is it, guess, does, does it come hard writing that style of music or do you just draw from like a personal experience and reference that as how you get in the mood? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's all from personal experiences. I guess I really try and pour everything into these songs and like that, let that be my like outlet, you know, like, um, I don't know. I, I try not to be like, 
even though like I am like, you know, struggling with like personal issues, you know, like anxiety and, and depression and, you know, losses and all, all that, like anyone else, like I really like make the music like my outlet. And I feel like writing these songs pretty much like, you know, saved my life in a, in a lot of like those ways. And that's why they are just like so emotional. It's like really trying to put everything, all those like bad feelings, like any any circumstances that in my life that like were into these like lyrics just put it into that and and trying not to like be that my my day to day you know everything like i i tried to be like upbeat in general <laughs> and like other than that i mean everyone has their bad days but like you know to the to the public eye to my friends and everything you know i i don't want to don't want to be just a you know, a, a gloomy a Debbie, down, a Debbie, down. Debbie down. The cloud <laughs> hanging you over you all the time, guy. I get it for sure. Did you, did you fellas bring uh, some extra beers to the party? I do. I saved, I saved one. This is my last one and I saved it just for this. One is <laughs> better than tea. none. We'll Hell take yeah. it. What are you drinking? What uh, are you drinking? I, I, I you're going to hate this. I, uh, I got a natty light. That's okay. Oh, there you I got go. a natty light. It's good. But it's got, it's one of my uh, favorite domestic beers. Oh, you get the high life. Okay, I so. got a high life. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're both living glory. I mean, our, we're our both living glory. Our technical, right now. Our, technically our like band beer of choice is hams. I've um, never even heard of that beer. That does, it, we don't ooh. have that in California. Hams. Good. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's from. It's, a, it's old. It's an old beer, but they like. It's it's real hip here. Okay. I guess I don't know. I don't know if I'd say hip. It's like cheap. <laughs> And uh, it's like it's like PBR, but a little bit cheaper, maybe yeah. it's cheaper. Some people would be offended. Some people would be offended that I said that, yeah. but it, it's its own thing. It's it's really good. Yeah, it's just a, a, like a I mean, a lot of beers are from Milwaukee, but, you know, just like a normal domestic Milwaukee beer. I got you. No like, worries. Yeah. Well, it, it, let's see if we're going to chug I mean, some it, beers. What oh movie or TV show have you gentlemen seen so many times? That it's impossible I stump you because you've seen this movie or TV show so many times. Uh, well, me and him are eleven years apart in age, so I feel like this might be a little difficult. So I'll tell you what, why don't you discuss on the side? I'll throw me, up. I'll throw up the song with Aaron real quick, the music video for it, and uh, we'll yeah, get, we'll that. get back to you in just a second. Hell yeah. We're hanging out with Gracie. Oh, it used to be a ham if you guys are feeling it, please go on YouTube, hit the sub button, jump over on Spotify, hit the follow button. <laughs> Fellas, what you got for me? All right, we have uh, we've made our decision, and I'm gonna go with the famous and. Oh, it's breaking up. It's you're breaking up on my end. I, I all I heard is famous. Motion picture, dis, famous and esteemed motion picture Cars by Disney Pixar. Cars. So it could be any movies from Cars. I mean, any any of the Cars Ooh. movies, or does it have to be Cars? I would one? prefer. I would prefer the first one, but I'm. <laughs> I could prefer the first I, one. I could take a stab at, at two and three. Because right, I have Cars two. Okay, I'm definitely better. I'm definitely better at the first one. If we're looking for content here, and me embarrassing myself and outing myself on knowledge of a children's movie. All right, let me see what I can do. But uh, so what in between in between now and December? Uh, I like to ask this question often. I I want to know what you guys' goals are for from a band perspective. What you'd like to achieve between now and December? Maybe you have certain things already lined up that you're not allowed to talk to us about. That's okay, but uh, what are you allowed to talk to us about? Um, okay, I'll tell talk a little about uh, the band. Uh, well, as you know, we, we just released our second EP, Wait in the Water, um, in April. So you know that's new content. So we're we're pushing all that. We did a, a music video for each song. That's what we really like like to do. We wanted like for the first EP, which was called um, Under the Surface, and the second EP, Wait in the Water. Um, our release plan was to like make a music video for every song, really push it. We release one song a month and really just like try and like keep up the content, you know, going. Um, 
For the first EP, we did a live performance. We rented out a roller skate rink and we played the whole P EP, like set up all our recording equipment. It was kind of like a our own version of Audio Tree or something like that, but you know, it was in a roller rink and we released a live version of the EP with, with videos for that. We did the same thing for Wait in the Water uh, and that's going to come out the first song next month and so all through summer we're going to be releasing those with like the full performance <clears throat> in the end but yeah live live ep version of wait in the water is coming up over the next like few months we got into a big abandoned warehouse and set up all our recording equipment so it sounds really cool like just the natural reverb of the huge space that we're playing in i really like how it turned out when you, now when um, you say when you say oh, live ep is that so that's like basically playing a whole set from start to finish of the EP, but there's a crowd there, but it's like professionally recorded. Uh, uh, there, there is no, no crowd, no crowd. Uh, okay. But yeah, like we we filmed it all. We like we set up like in this big abandoned warehouse, like kind of spread out from each other, and it's almost like, I mean, you've seen Audio Tree or like those in studio performances. It's that kind of same like version of us, a uh, uh, performance of the of the EP, but like it's live, you know, we're not like just like tracking it like in the studio, but like it's, it's a one take like performance kind of thing uh, that we did. In it this has big that like ringing, warehouse. the ringing reverb, natural delay effect to it. Uh, like you say. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. like us live playing it, but like, yeah, there was no audience there. So it's just a performance of us playing it. So we're going to be releasing that. And also we are recording our next EP, EP three. Uh, we're in the process of doing that. So that's, you know, we're tentatively trying to put that out next year, but we're going to be releasing the, the live EP like for content as we're doing that. Uh, we've already started tracking the instruments and, and those are all done. We like next very cool it's just doing the vocals and everything like that I'm, yeah we'll send it off to will to get mixed and mastered so you know and in between there so like yeah releasing the live ep recording the next ep you know just playing shows and you know tentatively we want to like be more and more active um just playing live and then you know start touring uh and that's like really our goals so just like really constant we just want to constantly keep releasing new music recording new music and then uh you know hit the road so that's about like our goals <laughs> do you do you have any interesting vocal warm-up tricks because i because you have such a unique style i i don't know if that like hurts the throat after each performance or what what do you do to keep your voice ready like pretending you have a back-to-back -back show like friday and a saturday for sure yeah i work um, in progress yeah I'm, I'm definitely you know working on it like it I'm not a master of it yet, and I drink a lot of tea. You know, I, I try and, you know, uh, yeah, I got my hot tea right there. Um, you know, uh, throat lozenges, you know, really just, like, try and, like, stay hydrated, self, you know, just, like, caring about it. Uh, but, yeah, I do um, vocal warm-ups uh, with uh, – I follow this guy, Chris Lipe. Uh, his, like, he's a YouTube guy. Um, he has a vocal program that I subscribe to. I also, um, Melissa Cross, you know, the Zenna screaming, Definitely. like try and do like all her stuff and like the vocal warm ups like that. Um, I'm always just like kind of asking people and searching, you know, YouTube or like, you know, um, Will, uh, from Lorna Shore just did like a vocal course with, with Chris, Chris Lipe and like anytime anything like that, like comes out, I'm always just trying to like listen to different vocalists and see what they do and try like their different things and see if it like works well with me. But, you know, I, I really do like every show take time to, you know, take my, my warm up time and like, you know, drink, a drink a lot of liquids, drink, you know, stay hydrated and, uh, hot liquids too. I just want to make sure everything's like, you know, warm and ready to go. And I don't know, I'm really just trying to figure out my like, I, I, I run out of breath a lot. Honestly, it's a work in progress for me to like get up my, my breathing and stamina. So that's what I'm like really trying to focus on and improve right now. And cause I feel like if I run out of breath, then like my vocals start suffering and then, you know, I'm more likely to hurt myself. So I'm just like trying to build up my stamina and stuff. And, and yeah, but I, I, I do have a pretty like intense vocal warm up routine just to make sure I'm trying to maintain like everything, but like just following courses like that from people I find on YouTube and, you know, the gotcha. Hell yeah. Chat wants to know if we can see 
uh, the was, art behind you on, your, on your right. <clears throat> Are you able to pick that up this? at all? Just like a little bit enough. So yeah. this is actually the... <clears throat> this is the cover of our first DP. That is uh, an actual painting done by our buddy Kevin. Yeah. Hold it hold down a little bit. There okay. you go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Uh, it's an actual painting, like I think acrylic paint on just some plywood. Yeah. And then uh, we took a super high quality photo of it and he used some like AI program to make it look a little bit more textured. Um, but that's like, yeah, it looks bad. The actual album artwork from our first EP. Yeah. He was, he was our bass player for the first EP. Um, he's a really good friend of ours and yeah, we love Kevin and yeah, it was super cool that he could make a physical, like large, uh, thing like painting for the cover. That was super rad. That is dope. I was only able to find Cars 2 Trivia, but I, I got one that I think is kind of easy. So we'll, we'll see. We'll okay. judge it by how you I'll, do it. I'll, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. All right. Here we go. This Ooh. is the one where if I lose, I have to chug this beer, right? Right. Whether you win or lose, I'm partying with you. And I'll do hot sauce right. and I'll chug the beer. Oh, God. In Cars 2, in the very oh, beginning of the movie... I need the first and last name. Who wins the first race? What is the name of the racer that wins the first race in Cars 2? In the very beginning of the movie. Oh, man. Do you know it? He talks to the public afterwards. <clears throat> Lightning loses the race and gets mad. <laughs> I for okay, so... This is the one with the world circuit, like the Grand Prix, isn't it? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just asking. All right. <laughs> well, I'm going to say it's Francesco Bernoulli. That is correct! Yeah, hell yeah. Let's go! That is correct! Yeah, it's in here. Well done. Francesco Bernelli. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. All right, fellas, if you're game, we all got to do something real quick. Yeah. Can you stand on one foot, rub, rub your belly, and tap your head all at the same time? I should be do this. I should be able to do this because I'm a drummer, but I guarantee I won't be able to. One foot. I'm also not very athletic. I don't really have the, a lot of space to do this, but... Uh, That's fine. I got to take my headphones off. So I won't yeah, yeah, me too. All right, so we got to stand on one foot, tap... Tap your head and rub your belly. Tap my head, rub my belly. I'm doing it. He's doing it. I can confirm he's doing it. It's not just because he's my friend. It's not <laughs> as hard as I thought. Yeah, we got it. That was all right. We got it. Hell yeah. <laughs> but before before you decided on Aaron, was there was there any other vocalist that you almost went with that uh, would have probably also worked but uh just it ended up being aaron and his parts fantastic but wh who are the other features that you were considering um i mean actually for that song we didn't like think of anyone else uh other than Aaron. like like um like trevor said like he was really feeling the under oath vibes after uh we did the cover and like under oath has always been like one of john's favorite bands like aaron's been super inspirational to him like from the beginning for years you know me and john have known each other and played in bands like for over like a decade and stuff like that um and actually we uh started playing in a band with with trevor like i don't know maybe like five years ago i'll say and trevor actually wasn't into like say like metalcore music at all or like anything like that he had never even like heard of under oath back back in that day and like so true. he was exposed to under oath like through us and like it become one of his favorite bands so like aaron I'm, gillespie is my favorite musician of all time <laughs> really yeah so nice. actually yeah like, he's he is like my fucking guy yeah so for for actually for this song like aaron was the first choice which which kind of like worked out like that and, and trevor just like sent the email you know like asked them and it, and it worked out that way but like um we do have songs in the future that we uh are going to be releasing with like different like guest vocalists we've we've recorded some um so i guess that's a secret for now but like we do have like other people um 
you know, more um, of different styles too. Like, you know, not, not just like a singing feature, uh, but like, you know, more like screamers and like just kind of like a variety of stuff like coming, coming into, into play. But I mean, if you're asking me some, who some of my like dream vocalists to like guest vocal would, would sure. be like, I don't sure. know, like Brian from knock loose would be like a top, like, choice for me he's just like you know so awesome in my opinion one of the best vocalists and like i don't know i'd say like a king like all-time vocalist like you know from back in the day who's still relevant would be uh josh from the original vocalist and norma jean who's who was in the chariot and and now is in 68 you know like he's like you know super up there on on like king vocals crazy live <laughs> shows crazy live shows like yeah top tier yeah the chariot are like super like one of my favorite bands of all time super imp- inspirational let's do let's do we've got time for a couple more let's do a fun one and then a serious one a fun one yeah. is uh hypothetically millions of dollars falls on your lap the band gets the craziest signing bonus of all time and even splitting it as many ways as many people are in the band you still got millions each You've taken care of your family. You've taken care of all the gear you could ever want, recording-wise, playing live-wise. That aside, is there something that you've always wanted to buy, but now you can afford it? More drums. It can't be gear. It can't be gear. (laughs) It can't be gear. God damn it. Okay, shit. Um... Because you already bought all the drums with all the new money. You've got got a lot. Just like a nice, reliable Honda CRV. Honda CRV. Okay, the old school CRV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just sure. a nice, reliable Honda CRV. Uh, uh, millions left over. <laughs> billions left over. Like, have you ever? Is there? Is there? Is there like a country you've always wanted hard. to visit? Uh, maybe you have a collection of Funkos that you, now you could fill it, and maybe you're you collect autographs for horror movies. Do you any hobbies See, right this now? This is this is a tough question because all of my like hobby related things are either or like mostly music things. So feeling fulfilled musically and like with my with my addiction to gear satisfied. Uh, you just pop. I had, you could go. You could you know, own oh, a baseball I got. I got. I, got I was gonna say I would. I would buy ownership in the Brewers. Really? Okay. For sure. The the label signing bonus wasn't that much. No, I'm just kidding. Well, no. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, okay, I would buy oh. season tickets to every major league stadium. So you're a diehard baseball fan over all sports. Yeah. 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 Trevor's a baseball guy for sure. Yeah, big time. Yeah. That's cool. kind of like all I did before joining this band was baseball, and then um, just the commitment to this got to be. Uh, the commitment and the payoff got to be better than what I was getting from spending all my time playing baseball. So kind of put that on the back burner for now, but I'm not officially retired yet. Gotcha. I, just, I don't have time to pick it up at the moment. The Brewers <laughs> come calling. You're going to go try out. Yeah. Or I'll just buy ownership stock. There you go. <laughs> well, you should, you should, you should try and, and uh, slide down Bernie's slide, but don't break your arm. Yeah. Like that guy. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What would you do? You didn't ask for that. Uh, I would probably do something. I don't know. Like a big, a big thing important to me are my, are my cats. You know, I'm a, I'm a big like animal guy. So I would either do something cool like for my cats, oh, or, same. or, same. or like get more cats, or like I don't know, like you know, big cat sanctuaries. You know, are, are really cool. I'd like to at least like donate or like you know, be a owner of one and be able to like you know, interact with like you know, something like, like tigers. Like I've got, like, I've got a huge tiger tattoo. Show them the tiger. On my, on my, on my, uh, nice. Like, they're my, my favorite. So like, if I could do something with tigers, like, I mean, did you yeah. see Tiger King? Yeah, I watched Tiger King. Of <laughs> for sure. Yeah. He's running for <laughs> if president. I interact, if I could interact with the tigers, but not like lose my arm, that'd be fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end on a serious one. <laughs> Uh, being that you guys have been okay. in and out of bands for many years, you said over 10 years, what is the most common mistake you see a local band make? Maybe you have, uh, you, you have like a, a homies band just starting up and they're giving it their all, but they're just 
continuously making a mistake and it, maybe it's not your place to be like, yo, you're doing it wrong, this, that, blah, blah, blah. But what, what mistake do you see that you don't want other local bands to do? Um, I would just say kind of like never, I guess, like stay humble and like stay like don't think you're bigger than you are. Even if you're like getting momentum, even if like anything, always like treat everyone fairly be kind to everyone as much as you can don't let like be like you know super small timey about like your attitude and like don't be closed minded just like talk to people be friendly with people always network um but like yeah never think you're bigger than you are and don't take any like opportunity for granted always just like you know be respectful you know give it your all at the shows you know be be nice to other bands be nice to venues be nice to fans you know just like be a cool person in general and you know talk to people you know just like be there for the music be there for playing the shows be there for the right reasons and don't let like egos or anything like that get to your head is, is i guess what i would say it's a great answer yeah that was good <laughs> that was Check. much better than what i was gonna say Chat wants to know, as a real final question, would you go Favre, Rodgers, or Jordan Love? Rodgers. Strictly as a quarterback, Rodgers. Um, I, I'd go with Rodgers, too, for sure. He's been, like, I guess, like, for the most time. Kicking my team's ass for years. Paying yeah. attention to football. But like Karma's know. coming to kill us. The fucking <laughs> Bears are getting good right as we're going through a rebuild, so that's going to be a... Uh, interesting next couple of years so we'll see Go what it's happens. baseball season Go Burris. Let's, we'll see what happens fellas this is fun man i appreciate you guys i wish you nothing but success uh please please come back uh let's say well you said the the ep before it gets to will i don't know should we say maybe january of next year or are we looking at it before that um, after that we should I, when it when it's gonna kind of come out, that would be close to release time. Yeah, because you know we're gonna be tracking the vocals. We're hoping to get him get him all everything to will like end of summer, like fallish era or, or time period in there, and then yeah, our early early release of next year. You know, something like that is when we're trying to do that. So we'd love to come back and talk. Yeah, about that'd be great. Year. That'd be great. Hell yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll this do is a lot we'll, of fun. We'll do a follow up, and uh, even though we weren't able to chug the beer. If you're down, Trev, let's let's pound a beer real quick. Go Yanks, go Brewers, go Vikings. Yeah. You can't get me to Appreciate say go Packers. Yeah. Yeah. Sports. <laughs> Sports. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gracie. Yeah, hell yeah. I, I appreciate you. You did not have to do it, but it was very cool of you to do that. So thank you guys. If you're not you. Hold on. You got it. Finish it up there. There it goes. If you guys are watching, please support them. Hit the follow button. Go on YouTube. They got a bunch of kick-ass videos. Please hit the sub button. Support them any way you can. And, of course, you guys are in our poll for today. And uh, if if you end up winning, you'll make what we call the Tournament of Champions. I'll show you on my screen what that looks like. All these artists have won previous streams. Some of them on the show. Some of, Most of them not. But uh, if you win, we play a second song of yours in addition to the song that won. And then we tag you in, like, a gazillion things and uh hopefully it's like our busiest day on the show so a lot of people will, will will see it so cheers i appreciate you and uh have an awesome afternoon man this is fun yeah thanks take you care. too have a great night thanks yeah. for hanging out everyone Welcome to the local band, Smokeout.